In this video, we're going to go over the difference between inequality and interval notation. So first, let's talk about inequality notation. Inequality notation is when you have the symbols less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. And for those of you that still have a hard time trying to figure out which one is less than, which one is greater than, realize that less than looks kind of like an L. So if you notice here, it's kind of like an L. So that is the less than symbol. And then this would be less than or equal to. Every time you have the line underneath the inequality, it means or equal to. So this is what is referred to as inequality notation. Let's say that we're going to look at X is greater than two. This is written in inequality notation. If I wanted to graph this right now, I would basically start at the number two. I would have an open circle at two and I would shade everything to the right. Okay, it's because we want all the numbers that are greater than two. What's gonna happen now is that instead of using inequalities, we're going to use something else called interval notation. In interval notation, this particular graph would change just a little bit. We're no longer gonna be using open circle, closed circle, but instead we're gonna be using parentheses and brackets. Parentheses are gonna be used for greater than or less than, and brackets are going to be used when it's or equal to. So less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So the difference is that in interval notation, I'm going to now graph by using parentheses, and I want everything that's greater than two. So I'm gonna to shade to the right just like before, and that really is the only difference between our graphs in terms of inequality notation and interval notation. We are moving away from open circle, closed circle to this concept of using parentheses and brackets. Take a look at your screen. Notice that I have written four different problems written in interval notation. The first one says from negative infinity to positive three. Notice that every time you see infinity or negative infinity, you're always going to use parentheses. That's because infinity is not a real number. Infinity is just the idea of unboundedness, and therefore infinity, positive and negative, is never going to take on a bracket, okay? It's always gonna take on a parenthesis. So the first one says that I want all the numbers from negative infinity all the way to positive three, but it's not going to include positive three. How do I know? Because in parentheses, I'm gonna be using them when I don't include that actual value. On a graph, this is what it would look like. This means that I want all the numbers from negative infinity up until I get to the number three. And again, the parentheses indicate that if I were to use the circles, it would be an open circle because I'm not really going to be including the three. So this is the same thing as saying X is less than three. Let's go ahead and look at the second one. The second one goes from negative one to positive four. The bracket is next to negative one there's a parenthesis next to four. This means that I'm actually going to include negative one, but I'm not including the four, okay? It's kind of like having a closed circle at negative one and then open circle at the four. So this is what my graph would look like for this problem. Notice I'm using brackets basically right here and then parentheses to match the parentheses by the four and the bracket for negative one. And then I shade everything in between. For inequality notation, this would mean that I want all the numbers that are less than four and greater than or equal to negative one. Again, the brackets are used for or equal to and parentheses when it's not or equal to. Let's try the next one. The next one says from positive seven, it's in brackets, so that means we include positive seven, headed all the way towards positive infinity. So let's see what that looks like in a graph. So I'm gonna start at seven. I'm gonna place a bracket here by the seven, and then I want all the numbers that are greater than seven because it says it starts at seven and it heads towards positive infinity. Remember what I told you about infinity. It is not a real number, therefore it's never going to take on a bracket. Now, how would I write this as an inequality? As an inequality, this would be x is greater than or equal to seven. 
Then the last one that you see on your screen is parentheses negative 5 comma 1. So on a graph, you're basically just going to create a number line. I'm going to say here is negative 5, here is positive 1. It's parentheses for both. So I'm going to go ahead and use parentheses around negative 5, parentheses around the 1, and then I'm going to shade everything in between because I want everything that is in between negative 5 and 1. So in an inequality, I want the numbers that are less than 1 and greater than negative 5. None of these are going to have a or equal to because I don't have brackets at all. So let's take a look at this next problem. Solve and write your answer in interval notation. Negative 3x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 8. In order for me to solve this inequality, I'm going to start by adding 4 to both sides. So when you add or subtract when working with inequalities, that never affects the actual direction of that inequality. So right now I'm going to have negative 3x is greater than or equal to 12. That inequality didn't change. It's still greater than or equal to, okay? Now, if you notice, I have negative 3x is greater than or equal to 12. I'm going to divide by a negative number. Because I am dividing by a negative number, then I'm going to have to switch the inequality. So here it becomes less than or equal to, and my answer is negative 4. So this means that I want all the numbers that are less than or equal to negative 4. If I were to put this on a graph, because I feel like a lot of times graphing it makes it a lot easier for you to understand how to use your interval notation symbols, I'm going to have negative 4. It's going to be a bracket, and it's going to be going to the left because I want all the numbers that are less than or equal to negative 4. So this basically means when we read, we read left to right, that we're starting from negative infinity until we get to negative 4 and we are going to include the negative 4. So that is how you're going to write your answer as an interval, an interval notation. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.